Well, good morning, everyone. As I look at the screen, I just have to tell you how warmed my heart is. I missed you last week, my St. Paul's community. So much so, I was in New Mexico with Lyle, and uh, on Wednesday, I decided to worship with you um, and hear their, your prayers and, and uh, some of the chatter that goes on before and during the peace, and it warmed my soul then, too. So uh, these challenging times do offer blessings that I can worship with you on a Wednesday when I'm on vacation. Mm. Um, so it's nice to be with you, not in person, but at least online this morning. Um, so just a few reminders before we begin to mute yourselves and include your prayers in the chat box for us to pray and offer to God during our time of prayer. Um, and also, there is an all speak during the peace and the offertory, and um, we invite you to unmute yourselves then so we can hear the many voices of all of us. So welcome to the 19th Sunday after Pentecost and to St. Paul's Online. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf, and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people. How stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O oh God, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains? and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 106. Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord or show forth all of his praise? Happy are those who act with justice and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people, and visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your elect, and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may glory with your inheritance. We have stirred as our forebears did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. Israel made a bull calf at Horeb, and worshiped a molten image. And so they exchanged their glory for the image of an ox that feeds on grass. They forgot God, their savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wonderful deeds in the land of Ham and fearful things at the Red Sea. So he would have destroyed them had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath from consuming them. A second reading from Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, 
Stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companions, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be, known, be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. from the Gospel of Matthew. Once more, Jesus spoke to the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. And he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. And the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot 
and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Lately, I've been forced to discern what I need to let go of in my life. I hate this. But with the extra duties piled on for after Roseanne's stroke, I simply don't have time or energy for all that I want or feel I need to do. I've been talking to God about it. Simple prayers like, is this all right? I feel guilty. And I have felt guilty. God has spoken to me about this through people with whom I've been in EFM training and spiritual direction supervision. It's taken a lot of knocking on my thick skull, but I've come to a whole new understanding of what ministry is. Ministry, I'm coming to see. It's not duties. It's not tasks you can do and then check off your list. Instead, it's my witness to my relationship with Christ. And it goes on all the time because I know Christ. Christ is with me closer than my next breath all the time. When I point to this, celebrating this primary, rela primary relationship in my life, and showing it to others, I am serving others in the most profound way possible. It's not what I do, it's where I look, and it's where I point other people to look. Our parable for today is a hard one to figure. If we look at it as an allegory, we're confounded by some very problematic images. First, there's the king. Is this God? Well, if he is, then God is a vengeful tyrant, a nasty narcissist. When people don't do, go to his party and when they mistreat and murder his slave, he turns around and burns down their city. Destruction is met with bigger destruction. The bullies are crushed by a bigger bully. Meanwhile, the banquet is still sitting there waiting. But this king seems to have an endless number of slaves. He sends out more to invite different people to come to his feast. Good people and bad people alike. He pulls them off the streets and byways. And these people come. This part of the story does make sense as allegory. We're all invited to God's feast, whether we deserve it or not. We're the guests at the holy banquet. We come and we celebrate. Yeah. But then we get to the bit in the story about the fellow who doesn't have a wedding garment on. Again, the king acts differently from the God I know and love. He commands the man to be bound and ousted from the party, cast away from everything good and warm and joyous into a realm of darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. This for being dressed improperly? Let's not treat this story as an allegory. Let's look instead symbolically at the fact that Jesus often alludes to himself as a bridegroom. What does he mean by this? In the language of the soul, the symbol of a wedding banquet is a very big deal. It's the celebration of a change of consciousness. Yes, it's a joyous response to something really big inside. There's a new way forward out of a conflict. A wedding might come up in a dream, for instance, when we figure out a third way between the tension of trying to live what mom and dad want from us and living a totally off the wall dream that is our very own and that brings us joy. Maybe we've wrestled with it and wrestled with it and something neither as reckless as the original dream nor as confining as the rule of the parents has dawned on us. We dream then of a wedding. The soul affirms and celebrates our our choice. 
It's God joining with us in profound rejoicing. Jesus is the bridegroom, the third way for humanity. He is the way forward. As the Gospel of John professes, he brings a new consciousness, a light in the darkness of human comprehension. He shows something completely new because he is the interface between God and humanity, God with skin on. The radical thing is who Jesus is, not what he says so much. In the middle of human history, God stuffed God's self into human form and became this being who was at once completely divine and completely human. He tented among us. The divine became human in order that humans might become divine. If we fully take this in, if we let it work on us, it changes us from our roots up. We see differently. We see what's most important in this life, what's most valuable, more valuable than gold or jewels, than your business or your status, your possessions, your family even. What is the one truth that remains with us through changes of fortunes, losses, and gains? The one truth that will set us free. It is, of course, the relationship each one of us has with God. This is what Jesus is all about. This is what he calls us into through his presence in the 3D world of human history. His manifestation is the incarnate God, Son of God. And there is no greater purpose in life, no more significant understanding than to find and build up our relationship with God. This is the only thing that lasts, the one thing we can always take with us, the one thing that matters. We are never alone. As Paul tells us in his letter to the Romans, whether we live or whether we die, we belong to the Lord. In this time of pandemic, extreme weather, violence, and division, we need more than anything to be reminded not of what to do, but of where to look. Like the poor fellow at the wedding feast, we're all bound up, lost in the outer darkness of fear and despair. There for sure is weeping and gnashing of teeth. How do we find the wedding garment? How do we come to see and experience the joyous feast that is a celebration of the bridegroom's coming? Where can we turn to find light and hope? It's in a most basic, most simple knowledge. We are gods. Lock, stock, and barrel. We belong to God. As we mourn everything that's being destroyed in the world, and there must be mourning, as we lament all that we cannot experience because of the pandemic, and there must be lament. As we weep over everyone we have lost to the virus and everyone who has died of other causes during this difficult, difficult time, and there must be weeping, we can rest in the sure knowledge that we belong to God. We can rest in God. Look here, Christ tells us, I am with you. I'm with you always. Feel the hope that comes from knowing, knowing it in your bones, that I will never abandon you. I will never abandon you. You are never alone. In this scary, overwhelmingly difficult time, we need to know where to look. We need to keep our gaze focused on the bridegroom. As Bishop Kim said in her address to the diocesan convention yesterday, we can survive COVID. We can survive being away from our churches. We can survive the fires. We can survive living a life that is not, but we cannot survive living a life that is not centered in Jesus. We need to know where to look and we need to point to it. We need to witness to it. That doesn't mean we have to go out waving our Bible to proclaim that Christ is Lord. No, instead we have to find the place within where we are nourished by our connection with God, where it fuels us. We have to find that place, get to know it consciously, 
let the connection work on us in its naturally transformational way. <clears throat> and then we have to act out of it. We have to witness to it in action and in words. And often in other words, besides God words, in all that we do. Ministry never ends. It is everything we do, from enjoying the golden leaves of autumn, to petting the cat, to helping somebody with their groceries, to being allies to people who are oppressed. Ministry is all the time, because it isn't about what we are doing. It's about where we are looking. We are looking towards Christ, the bridegroom, the game changer. So as St. Paul bids us in his letter to the Philippians, which we read this morning, <coughs> rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Look to Christ. Point to Christ. God's peace is with you. Amen. Amen. The Immigrant's Creed. I believe in Almighty God who guided the people in exile and in exodus, the God of Joseph in Egypt and Daniel in Babylon, the God of foreigners and immigrants. I believe in Jesus Christ, a displaced Galilean, who was born away from his people and his home, who fled his country with his parents when his life was in danger, and returning to his own country, suffered the oppression of the tyrant Pontius Pilate, the servant of a foreign power who then was persecuted, beaten, and finally tortured, accused, and condemned to death unjustly. But on the third day, the scorned Jesus rose from the dead, not as a foreigner, but to offer us citizenship in heaven. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the eternal immigrant from God's kingdom among us, who speaks all languages, lives in all countries, and reunites all races. I believe that the church is a secure, the secure home for the foreigner and for all believers who constitute it, who speak the same language and have the same purpose. I believe that the communion of saints begins when we accept the diversity of the saints. I believe in the forgiveness of sin, which makes us all equal and in reconciliation, which identifies us more than does race, language or nationality. I believe that in the resurrection, God will unite us as one people in which all are distinct and all are alike at the same time. Beyond this world, I believe in life eternal in which no one will be the immigrant, but all will be citizens of God's kingdom, which will never end. Amen. The prayers of the people as a reminder, if you haven't already done so, please add your prayers in the chat box. God of refuge, gather us in, forever inviting us to your banquet of the fullness of life. It is discomforting at times to accept our chosenness. Yet under your watchful gaze, we long for your sheltering embrace of eternal welcome. God of mercy and grace, hear our prayers. Guard our hearts and our minds, that seeking whatever is true, we will come to know the path we are called to follow, not only for ourselves, but as the body of Christ in this place and in this time, the feast awaits. Prepare us, O oh God of hope. Guard our hearts and our minds as we move through each moment of our daily living. Keep us ever mindful of whatever is honorable, especially in our treatment of one another, our stewardship of the gifts of the earth, and our time spent in silence with you. Prepare us, O oh God of our forming. Guard our hearts and our minds <clears throat> that we may always seek whatever is just, 
standing firm and forthright for integrity, peace, justice, and dignity. We pray and work for the sheltering safety of the displaced and homeless of the world. Prepare us, O God of protection. Guard our hearts and our minds and grant us moments of grace and stillness. In learning to let go of the noise that blocks our hearing, we open our lives to your voice. May we seek whatever is pure in the light of our serving and our loving. Prepare us, O God of empowerment. Guard our hearts and our minds that in the pursuit of whatever is pleasing in your sight, we hold your joy within us that stands steadfast and unchanging. With prayer, we encourage and uplift those in the church of the province of Uganda. Prepare us, O God of diversity. Guard our hearts and our minds as we continually grow in understanding, embracing community as one with all. With prayers covering, we uplift those of the Church of the Ascension in Salida, St. John's Cathedral in Denver, St. Luke's Church in Delta, St. Paul's Church in Fort Collins, and St. Peter's of the Valley Church in Basalt. Prepare us, O God of possibilities. If you have not already done so, please add your prayers in the chat box. We pray for he ongoing healing for Roseanne. Prayers for Lahoma as she begins seminary in the UCC tradition. Prayers for Carol, Christine, Ron and Jackie, and prayers of safety for Connor. Peace and healing for Linda and Dennis in Texas. Happy 15th birthday to a grandson, Andrew. For all the medical and firefighter personnel working so diligently to provide help and succor to all of us. We pray for healing for Sherry, for strength and patience for Marie, Gage, and Hunter. We pray for all the people impacted by the wildfires in Colorado and other Western states. We send prayers for the repose of the soul of Sarah, Holly's sister. We pray that during this mental health week that all remember and pray for those who suffer every day with these illnesses especially during this time of isolation in the world. Give thanksgiving for Amy's sister, brother-in-law, and niece that they are doing well. We pray for safe travel for Kaysen. We pay, pray for comfort and healing for the Walsh family in their time of grief and mourning. We pray for Forrest and all his struggles. We give thanks, God, for your love and care of Peter Please continue to keep him safe. We send prayers for John and Kelly and Nicholas and healing for Bill. Send prayers for healing for Lori. We send prayers for all first responders, including all the firefighters. We send prayers in memory of Tamara and Daryl. We pray for Allison and Nick who will marry next weekend. We pray for healing for Booker. We pray for the repose of the soul of Tamara and for those who grieve whose lives she touched so profoundly. We pray for the upcoming weddings of Lauren Martin, Lauren Gruba, and Holly Colvin. May their marriages be blessed with the sacrament of the third way. May Christ center their, may Christ center their unions and bless them with unimaginable joy. We pray for the wildfires, which are being severely challenged by fire and drought and all, sorry, sorry, God, start over. Pray for the wildlife, which are being severely challenged by fire and drought. We send prayers for Jim Etter 
and his cancer treatment. <clears throat> Guard our hearts and minds and guide us gently as we grow in compassion and mercy. May our care and companioning of those in need, whether physical or spiritual, afford them sanctuary and peace. We ask your grace and healing light. God of peace, in your infinite love, we divest ourselves of all pretense and affirm that if there is anything worthy of praise, it is you, source of all life. We come together in this feast of love and, remembering all who have died, give you thanks for life in all its abundance. Goodness and mercy follow us as we dwell in your house forever. Amen. Almighty God, by whose grace all worldly leaders exercise power, help politicians and voters move through this election season with respect and dignity. Bless all who are vying for political office with clarity and transparency in their campaigns and give voters openness and diligence in casting their ballots. Help us keep perspective that we may be firm in our convictions kind and respectful to those who vote differently and ever mindful that how we treat others is how we treat you. This we ask of the one who is Lord over every election, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you all to unmute yourselves as we pass the peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be 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 with you. Hi, Alex. Hi, Judith. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Terry. Hi, Betsy. I don't know what happened. Peace, Don. Peace, Woody and I, we are grateful to you for all the joys and the blessings of this life. Everything we have and everything we are comes from you. Help us give back for the furtherance of your kingdom out of the generosity that springs from our love and gratitude. All, All things come of you, Lord. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God who made us and who loves us and who travels with us be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. There, trying to unmute myself. Sorry about that. <laughs> the flowers on the screen here and that have been beside me in my space were arranged by Nancy McDuffie and given in memory of Richard McDuffie. Welcome to any of you who might be worshiping with us for the first time. We're delighted that you found St. Paul's online. And uh, if you'd like to know more about our community of faith, I encourage you to sign up for the epistle, which is our weekly email communication that comes out on Thursday, which gives you an idea of what's going on in our common life together. And also, if you would like to meet with me one on one and find out more about St. Paul's, I welcome that. Please send me an email at rector at St. Paul's dash fc.org. I would love to, to get together with you. Welcome. Next Sunday, weather permitting, and I really hope it does, we're doing an outdoor worship with communion at 9 a.m. So once again, we'll gather on the lawn at 301 East Stewart, and um, you can join us there, bring a chair for every member of your party and a mask for every member of your party. Uh, or if you don't want to gather with us out there, if it's, if it's just too cold for you personally or uh, you can't do it because of the issues of health, live stream the service on the St. Paul's YouTube channel. And to get that address, all you have to do is go to our website and scroll to the bottom of any page on our website and then click the YouTube button and there you'll be. If you'd like to consume consecrated bread and wine as the same time, at the same time as the people who are on site, please pick up what you need at the office on Thursday uh, the 15th. Call Weltha to arrange a time that she's going to be there at the office. Or you can make arrangements to have consecrated bread and wine delivered to you by emailing office at stpauls-fc.org. Two weeks from today, we will have our next joint worship service with our faith partners on October the 25th. And just make a note that the service time is different. We'll be beginning at 1030 a.m. And one of the key elements of this service that we're having together is that we are covenanting with one another to take one step further into our relationship um, with each other. So we'll be celebrating our common mission and covenanting in this partnership. So we invite you to join us two weeks from today at 1030. The Zoom link will be provided in the epistle. Habitat. There are three opportunities for Habitat for Humanity. First, watch a video recording of Habitat's We Build Breakfast Zoom meeting, and the link is in the epistle. Second, donate to Habitat. We're still in that place where you can get a four to one match on every dollar that you contribute. So donate now. Write a check to St. Paul's and uh, write Habitat for Humanity in the memo line. And finally, you can volunteer to build at the Harmony Cottages site on Saturday, 1024, excuse me, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. You have to register beforehand and there are only a few openings. So contact Gray right now if you're interested in doing that. First come, first serve, but with a preference for first time volunteers. No experience is necessary and Habitat needs you. If you haven't already sent a picture of one of the personal saints in your own life or more than one, uh, we invite you to do so. The deadline is this Friday and those will be incorporated into our All Saints Day service on November the 1st. Uh, the deadline is this Friday, October the 16th. And let's keep talking about communion. Um, right after our worship service, actually not quite right after, at 10.30, but at the same link as we're on right now, come and talk with us about communion. We're going to consider these four questions. We began to do this a couple of weeks ago, so we're, we're kind of furthering the conversation. 
Is communion important to you? And if so, what makes it important? What is your most powerful memory of a time you, you participated in the Eucharist? What does an experience of table fellowship need to include in order for you to think of it as a communion? And is the Eucharist an essential part of worship? So come and share your thoughts about these questions at 1030 right here on this, this same Zoom link. The Office of Government Relations and the Episcopal Church offers a packet of information, um, getting souls to the polls, as Bishop Michael Curry says. Um, there's a great link in the epistle. You can click on it to get that packet of information. They encourage you to make an action step, a plan for voting. Um, I got my ballot here um, just yesterday and uh, have developed my own plan and hope you have too. Uh, there are two ways that they suggest you can help on election day. Um, offering rides to people who need a ride to get out to the polls, and also maybe offering childcare to someone who would need that in order to vote. If you're willing to provide either of those services on election day, please let the church office know uh, so we can maybe pair you up with someone who is in need of those services. Election day is coming, November the 3rd. Uh, make sure you plan your vote. And we are looking for um, little videos of uh, kids singing or playing an instrument, actually anybody in your family singing or playing an instrument, consider recording something to be shared uh, during the season of Advent and Christmas. We really love to have the, the faces and the voices of the people of our congregation. It's, it's nourishment in this time when we're physically apart. So it would be a real gift to us if you would do that. Um, submit any recordings by November 1st, please. And if you need any assistance, either with ideas or recording tips or any support at all, Kay Williams is really uh, willing to help out. And her contact info is right there on the screen. I'll give you a second to write it down. It's also uh, in the epistle. Sunday school will begin uh, right after this service in 10 minutes at 10 o'clock. And the two places you can find that link are in the reminder for the worship service this morning that came out in your email or in last Thursday's epistle. That's at 10 o'clock Sunday school. And if you can bring two pieces of paper, preferably square, but if not bring scissors and you know, can cut them into square pieces. Do you need help um, in this time when financial insecurity abounds and other issues come up? If so, uh, contact Pastor Felicia at her rector at stpauls-fc.org address and she'll get right back to you. Several opportunities for worship this week. Um, Next week, as was mentioned, we'll attempt to worship on the lawn, provided that the smoke is not too bad and it's not too, um, too, too cold. Uh, but bundle up because the high for that day is 55. So at 9 a.m., it's gonna be a little chillier than that. Um, week, uh, Wednesday, uh, excuse me, Tuesday morning at 8 a.m., we'll have our regular Tuesday morning prayer. And Wednesday at noon, we'll have our Zoom hangout where we visit with one another and share prayer requests and how life is going in this time. And Wednesday evening, we'll have worship in the garden that is beginning at five o'clock. It's 30 minutes earlier than we have been beginning. And uh, although it says on the screen that it's at Mary Jane Marvuglio, it's actually going to be at Mike and Jody Werner's home. And if you'd like to attend worship in the garden, please send an email to the office so that we can reserve a space for you. And I made a big mistake in that announcement about the Zoom Hangout. It actually is this week that we start at 1130. So uh, sorry about the confusion, but join us at 1130 for the Zoom Hangout instead of at noon. Is anyone celebrating a birthday or a wedding anniversary or would like special prayers for something in coming week? My birthday, tomorrow. 
Is that Mike? All right. Hey. And Jim. Yeah. All right. Well, Jim. Other? Mine was yesterday. Ah, uh, Jim and Mike. Oh. Betsy and Joe, is it an Anna? Oh, no, you're getting your hands ready for blessing. Awesome. <laughs> did Ann, Ann Turper, did you wave? No. Okay. Just. <laughs> nope. All right. Well, let us offer our hands of love and blessing as we give Mike and Jim uh, prayers for their birth celebration. Oh, God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor on your servants, Mike and Jim, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. And thank you for the gift they are to all who know them. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Well, now we're going to break into some breakout rooms so that we can share with one another on a little more intimate scale. Um, if you don't wish to be broken out into rooms, we look forward to seeing you here next week on this same bat channel. Well, actually, <laughs> Zoom channel. <laughs> so I will break you all up now and we'll come back together in about 20 minutes. <laughs>